The idea of buying a new camera for BMX or action sports in general can be a little bit overwhelming at first with all of the options that are out there. What specs do I need? How much should I spend? Where do I even look? They're all questions that you might have, but if you keep a few things in mind, your search will get a little bit easier. So when you're buying a new camera, there's a few options that you have to look into. You can buy new, you can buy used, you can buy inexpensive, or you can buy the most expensive top of the line professional equipment. But when you're buying a camera for action sports video, there's one thing that you need to make sure that you get. That is 1080p, 60 frames a second. That's it. In 2017, that's the standard for action sports video. And all of the cameras that I'm gonna talk about today, shoot. 1080p 60 frames a second. So before we start talking about specific cameras, there's a couple other things that I need to mention. Buying a new camera should be based on your needs and what you're going to do with that camera. If you're a beginner just starting out, chances are you have a cell phone that already shoots 1080p 60 frames a second. This is what I shoot most of the videos that I upload and all of the videos that are just normal riding videos that I upload to my channel because all I have to do to shoot a video with it is pull it out, slide over, and I have the camera open. I don't have to dig into my camera bag, pull my camera out, change lenses, turn it on, make sure the batteries are charged, make sure I have a memory card, all of that. I just pull my phone out, start recording. It's just convenient. So before you go out and spend a ton of money, if you're just starting out, check your phone. It might shoot 1080p 60 frames a second, and it probably is good enough for what you're doing now. Save your money and buy something good whenever you have the money to do it. There's no sense in going out and spending $100 on a camera that you're not going to be happy with, and you're gonna just buy the camera that you needed anyways later on and spend more money. So check your phone, it could be worth it for you. So the first camera I'm gonna talk about is the Sony NEX 5N. This camera's a few years old now, but you can buy this camera on Amazon used right now, body only for $230. And if you look in other places like eBay, you can even find them for like a hundred to $150 if you get lucky. I have a friend who uses this camera and he loves it. The quality on it looks great. It shoots in 1080p, 60 frames a second, just like I mentioned earlier. And I even have a couple clips from this camera in my last video part that I have uploaded on my channel. The main thing about this camera that makes it stand out from the others, aside from price, is its size. This camera is tiny. So if you're looking for a compact camera that packs a huge punch in quality, this could be the option for you. Another camera in the same category and price range as the Sony NEX 5N is the Panasonic G5. It's another interchangeable lens camera that shoots 1080p, 60 frames a second, and it's around the same price. Right now on Amazon, they have one for $220 used. I put this in the same category as the NEX 5N because with both cameras, you get similar features like 60 frames a second video and the ability to shoot in RAW with your photos. And they're around the same price. The only difference really is the fact that the G5 is a little bit more substantial in the hand. So if you can't have a tiny camera, you're afraid you might break it, maybe the G5 is a good option for you. So the next camera I wanna talk about is the first camera that's not an interchangeable lens camera. That is the Panasonic FZ200. This camera is a super zoom camera, which means that the lens is built into the camera itself and you can't interchange it as you can with the other two cameras that I've talked about. The main selling point for this camera is the lens on it. It's got a constant f2.8 aperture and a focal length equivalent to 25 millimeter all the way to 600 millimeter. The constant f2.8 aperture means that no matter where you're at in that 25 to 600 millimeter focal range, your aperture does not change. With most other zoom lenses for interchangeable lens cameras and super zooms and other compact cameras, the aperture changes as you zoom in. So when you zoom in, you'll notice that it gets darker. This camera does not do that, and that's the main reason why it's on my list. It's also only like $250 to $300, and you might even be able to find it cheaper than that. So with this camera, you're getting 1080p, 60 frames a second, you're getting a focal range of 25 to 600 millimeters, and you're getting it at f2.8 all the way through. And you're getting that for $250 to $300. 
To give you an idea of how crazy this really is, let's take a look at what it would cost you to do this with any other camera on the list. I know I didn't list any Canon cameras, but I'm going to use Canon lenses as an example because they're the most widely used and well-known lenses that have constant apertures. So the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 constant aperture lens is around $1,800 new and the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens f2.8 constant aperture is around $2,000 new. So without even buying a camera and only going from 24 to 200 millimeter focal range with two different lenses costs around $4,000. That's just an example of the value that you're getting with this camera. So the only real drawback to this camera is the fact that you can't take the lens off and put a fisheye on, but you can screw on fisheye lens adapters just like you can with camcorders. The same person I know who has the NEX 5N now used to have the predecessor to the FZ200, which was the FZ100. He used to use screw on fish eyes all the time. And I talked to him before I made this video and he said that it worked great and no different than whenever you would use a camcorder. So if you don't think that you need to change lenses and you don't mind using a screw on fish eye, this is definitely the camera for you because it's only 250 to $300 for the whole package. From there, all you need to buy is maybe a battery and a memory card and you're good to go. None of the other cameras on this list can do that. The next few cameras that I'm gonna talk about are those high-end cameras that really you should only be looking into if you already have camera experience or you have a ton of money to burn and plan on learning how to use a camera in depth. These cameras are the Panasonic GH4, which I'm shooting with right now, or the Sony A7S and A7S II. So a lot of the differences between these cameras have to do with preference. Also the fact that the GH4 came out before the Sony A7S and that means that some people already had migrated to the micro four thirds ecosystem. And once you buy all of this equipment, you're never going to get all of your money back. So it's just not worth it sometimes to sell your gear and then move over to something like the Sony. There are a few key features though of the Sony that might make it more appealing to someone shooting BMX or action sports video. The fact that it has incredible low light performance and goes up to something like 500,000 ISO or something like that and up to like 256,000 ISO is like usable. It basically lets you see in the dark. A lot of people shoot at night whenever it comes to action sports so they need that high low light performance. Also the Sony's have internal stabilization. This means that when you're moving the camera around the camera is moving the sensor within within the camera to compensate for your movements. So if you're running around filming friends and shooting handheld, the camera is gonna compensate for that somewhat and give you better stability and smoothness in the shot, whereas something like the GH4 won't give you that. I prefer the GH4 mainly because I got it before the A7S came out. The A7S was like $2,000 when it came out. The GH4 was only 1,400 or something like that. And I started with the Panasonic GH2 and I loved this camera. So naturally, whenever a groundbreaking camera like the GH4 came out, I wanted it. Really, before you buy a camera like this, you should be doing your research and using the camera first. Find a friend who has it, go to a camera shop, test it out, film some for yourself, take the footage home, look at it. And there's also test footage from all of these cameras online that you can download and look at for yourself. You should never just be buying a camera blindly and hoping that it comes in and you like it. You're spending thousands of dollars. You should be sure of your purchase first. The last camera I'm gonna talk about is the successor to the Panasonic FZ200 and that is the Panasonic FZ300. The FZ300 keeps the same constant f2.8 aperture through the 25 to 600 millimeter focal range of the FZ200 and adds 4K video and internal stabilization all for around 500 bucks. So for literally half the price of a GH4 or A7S and one quarter of the price of an A7S II, you get the internal stabilization of the A7S's, you get the internal 4K of the GH4 and the A7S II, you get 1080p 60 frames a second and 720p 120 frames a second, as well as that f2.8 constant aperture 25 to 600 millimeter lens. 
This is a tremendous value for only $500, whereas you have to spend thousands to get the equivalent with all of the other cameras that I mentioned. So the last aspect of buying a camera for use with action sports that I wanna talk about is the fisheye lens. This is something that you absolutely have to have if you're going to be shooting a lot of action sports video and photos. There's not an action sports photographer or videographer out there who does not have one of these in their bag. And even if you're just starting out, they make fish eyes that clip on or screw onto a case for your iPhone that makes your video, it just brings it to a whole nother level. While I wouldn't recommend using one of these all the time, a fisheye lens is 100% the easiest way to up your production value when it comes to making action sports videos. All of the cool shots and the skating and BMX videos that you see are usually done with this because it, it's easy to do. It's easy to make things look good with a fisheye lens, whereas a long lens is much harder to make something look really good. So without a doubt, if you're gonna be buying a camera for use with action sports, a fisheye is something that you absolutely have to look into and buy if you can. You won't regret it. So to sum all of this up, if you're on a limited budget and you're looking for a compact camera that you can change lenses on and can also produce a professional quality result, I would recommend the Sony NEX 5N. If you have a little bit bigger of a budget and you're not as worried about cost and you want one of those higher end cameras, I would absolutely recommend something like the GH4 or the A7S or the A7S II. I would just recommend to do your research, test them all out, find which one you like better, and make sure that when you make that big purchase, it's going to be something that you are happy with. Now, if you're just beginning out or you've been shooting on your phone for a while and you feel like you're ready for a camera and you don't mind not having that interchangeable lens, then the absolute best value for your money for action sports video is going to be the FZ200 from Panasonic. That F2.8 constant aperture through 25 to 600 millimeters is something that's just unmatched for 250 to $300. You would literally have to spend thousands to meet that with any of these other cameras except for obviously the FC300. This camera is something that's going to be good in low light because it's got a wider open aperture on the lens and you're gonna be able to zoom and get that great looking zoom with the video and you can get an inexpensive screw-on fisheye adapter and it's going to look just like you're using a camcorder. This camera is absolutely the best camera that you can buy for $250 to $300 for action sports video and get 1080p 60 frames a second video that is great quality. So that's it for my picks on the cameras that will give you the absolute best value for your money for BMX or other action sports video. If you like the video, consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, I'd be interested in hearing what you guys think of the content that I've been putting out. Is there anything specific that you wanna see? And any other comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll be sure to reply to them. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.